Hey, superstars, welcome to the Get Rich Without Being a Bitch podcast. And I am your host, Vanessa Shaw, for this journey. We're going to be challenging some stereotypes, shattering glass ceilings, really looking at what it takes to live richly and to design a business that's going to support the life that you really want to be living. I'm going to be sharing lots of tips, tools, and strategies along the way, and I can't wait for you to join me on this journey. Hey, superstars, welcome back. We are working through the guiding principles. There's 10 of them that provide a framework for how to get rich without being a bitch. In the previous episode, I covered the first three. We're now going to go on to the next three. So let me refer back to my notes. And we are on principle four. I am the unique visionary for my life and business. My decisions and my actions are fully aligned with my vision. I embody excellence, growth, and integrity. Wow, there's a lot there. Let's just unpack that, right? As CEO in your business, as business owner, but as CEO in your life, it is your responsibility to come up with that vision of what you want, right? That's based on your unique desires. So you have to create that. Otherwise, you will find yourself living somebody else's vision and being dragged off course. Equally so, we need to make sure that we are aligning decisions and actions with that vision, right? This is where change comes into these micro changes that we make. We make so many decisions on a daily basis, make so many decisions, frankly, on an hourly basis, and then actions ensue from that. But if we are making decisions that aren't aligned with that bigger vision, we're constantly going to be getting ourselves off course. So this is about, yes, that vision and then really getting ourselves aligned with it. Not perfectly. There are times when I am definitely off course, but I can recognize it, right, and get back on track. So we want to be creating that alignment and that smoothness and that flow as much as we humanly can. And then embodying Excellence, growth, and integrity. What does this mean? Excellence is about that aspiring to higher standards, aspiring to more for yourself, for more for your business, for yourself, treating yourself well, treating your business, your communications, your relationships, really stepping it up, right? Growth, constantly growing, constantly looking at where is your next learning edge? Where are those opportunities for growth so that you are always expanding you into your next version of being and integrity? Are you staying true to your word, right? Do your actions actually match with what you say you're going to do, right? How you treat other people in the world? And is it, does it all line up in the way that it should do? That's principle number four. Principle number five, I design my own elegant world. I seek to remove tolerations from my life, set higher standards for myself, and only work in my zone of genius. If you've been listening to some of the previous episodes, this one might be sounding somewhat familiar because I talk about what gets in the way is tolerations, right? It's not, you don't get what you want, you get what you tolerate. So you design the world that you want to be creating. And again, your life and your business, I see it as all one and very much integrated. But it's also your responsibility to keep revisiting those tolerations and removing them from your life. My husband used to use a term which I really loved called friction-free living. And we went through a time period, probably for a couple of years, where we'd moved from uh, Europe to the States. And we were just setting up our life in such a way that we were really removing stresses. We were getting help in certain things that we no longer wanted to be doing. Anything that caused us friction, we found ways around it. And life just became really fun and easy. And by the way, it felt a little odd as well, because I think we're so used to like some of that friction. But it was a really fun exercise to go through, right, where we started to raise those standards for ourselves and remove the things that were draining us. 
And the idea here in business is that you want to be not loading yourself up with more and more of those things that drain you, is that you're actually growing your business by less and you are moving closer to your zone of genius. And that zone of genius is defined by what you're most passionate about, what is most energizing for you, what is the highest value activities that typically generate money in your business and that normally only you can do. It's not the things that you can easily outsource. So again, this is why this principle is really important for business. Let's move on to principle number six. I am fully confident in the value I bring. I work uniquely with champagne clients who respect my expertise, accomplish exceptional results, and happily pay premium fees. Again, I'm going to unpack this one for you. And on a personal level, I'm going to share with you that I doubted my own value for years. That's why this one was so important. And it's something I see with women that's very prevalent. I questioned my value, which meant that I over-delivered, I undercharged, I got, got, in, got into a lot of second guessing um, and frankly tied myself in knots. And it was when I started to work with what we refer to as champagne clients. So again, quick side note, because it's important and we'll dig into this later in subsequent episodes. We define clients by champagne, wine, or beer. I think that's probably fairly self-explanatory. Ideally, we want to be having champagne and good quality wine clients and eliminating beer. Typically, that's the way it goes. But when I started to really define who my champagne clients were, who were the women I loved to serve, what level of business did they need to be and what did they need to be bringing at the table so that we did really great work together? They were frankly fun to work with. I was going to be inspired by them as well. It meant I had to like, step up my own skills, right? expand my expertise, and that I could really get exceptional results for those women. And they would happily pay their fees. It was interesting that once I did that, my own sense of self worth and that confidence in the value I was bringing to the table started to get minimized. So my own sense of self worth started to get increased and questioning, right? That sense of self worth and the value I was bringing to the table started to go down. That was a really important shift for me in terms of enhancing that value. By contrast, when we work with the wrong types of clients and the beer clients, the ones that are demanding, draining, they're questioning us, they, you know, nickel and dime us on fees, it can really damage the value that we're bringing to the table and damage our self-worth. So this is a really key guiding principle in terms of getting rich without being a bitch is really aligning yourself with the right clients. Love to hear again from you what's been meaningful, what's valuable in today's section of these guiding principles. Please drop a review below. Love to know what's resonating with you. And as always, if you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and make sure that you're subscribing on your favorite platform channels, Apple and Spotify. And be sure to share this with a friend as well. And just as a reminder, in the show notes is a beautiful document for you to print out with the 10 guiding principles on them. Feel free to share them with a friend as well. <laughs>